Did Jesus of Nazareth, the central figure of Christianity, really exist? This question, simple as it may seem, has sparked countless debates, heated discussions and extensive research. It is a question that invites us to journey back in time, to an era steeped in myth and history, where fact and faith often intertwine. The existence of Jesus of Nazareth, the man whose teachings would become the bedrock of one of the world's most influential religions, is not just a matter of historical curiosity. It is a question that holds immense significance for religious scholars, historians and believers alike. For religious scholars, it's a quest for historical truth and an opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of the roots of Christianity. For historians, the existence of Jesus of Nazareth is a puzzle to be solved, a piece of the ancient world's complex tapestry that needs to be examined in the context of its time. And for believers, it's a matter of faith, the cornerstone of their spiritual identity. The debate around Jesus' existence is far from new. It has been a point of contention for centuries, ever since the first accounts of his life were penned. And while the New Testament offers a wealth of information about Jesus' teachings and deeds, it is not the only source that has been studied in search of answers. In fact, the quest for evidence of Jesus' existence has led scholars to explore a variety of historical sources, from classical writings to Jewish texts and even other Christian documents. From the annals of Roman historian Tacitus, which mention a Christus executed by Pontius Pilate, to the writings of Josephus, a Jewish priest who lived in first century Palestine, the search for Jesus has spanned continents, languages and millennia. But despite the wealth of information available, the question remains, did Jesus of Nazareth, the man whose teachings have shaped the course of history and inspired billions, really exist? Today, we delve into this age-old question, examining evidence from both biblical and non-biblical sources. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence comes from the classical world. Now let's journey back in time to the first century Roman Empire, an era of emperors and gladiators, but also of scholars and historians. Among them was a man named Tacitus, one of the greatest historians of the Roman Empire. His works provide an invaluable look into the past, and one passage in particular is of extraordinary significance to our discussion. In his Annals, Tacitus made a reference to a man named Christus. Now you might ask, why is this significant? Well, Christus is a Latinized version of the Greek word Christos, which translates to the Anointed One in English, a title often associated with Jesus of Nazareth. But Tacitus does more than just mention a name. He gives us a glimpse into the life and death of this Christus. He writes about a man who was executed by Pontius Pilate during the reign of Emperor Tiberius. Now, for those familiar with the New Testament, this description will undoubtedly sound familiar. It directly correlates with the biblical narrative of Jesus' death. So, why is this so important? To put it simply, Tacitus was not a Christian. He had no reason to perpetuate Christian beliefs or narratives. As a historian, his primary concern was to record events as accurately as possible, not to propagate religious doctrine. His account of Christus and his execution by Pontius Pilate stands as an independent corroboration of the New Testament narrative, providing a secular account that parallels the biblical description of Jesus' life and death. Moreover, Tacitus was known for his rigorous methodology. He was meticulous in his work, often cross-checking his facts and scrutinizing his sources. This lends even more credibility to his account of Christus, suggesting that it was based on reliable information available at the time. It's also worth noting that Tacitus's reference to Christus is not a passing remark. It's part of a larger narrative about the early Christian community in Rome. He talks about the followers of Christus whom he refers to as Christians. He describes them as a distinct group separate from mainstream Roman society which further supports the existence of a historical Jesus around whom this community formed. In conclusion, Tacitus, with no vested interest in Christianity, provides us with an unbiased historical mention of Christus. His account, written from a secular perspective, offers compelling evidence for the existence of Jesus of Nazareth beyond religious texts. 
It's a fascinating glimpse into the past, one that continues to inform our understanding of history and faith. Another strong piece of evidence hails from Jewish writings of the time. In our quest to explore the existence of Jesus outside the New Testament, we turn our attention to first century Palestine and Rome, the home of Josephus, a Jewish priest. Josephus was a historian, a man dedicated to documenting the world around him, and his writings offer intriguing insights. Josephus, despite being a man of Jewish faith, didn't shy away from discussing figures outside his religion. Among these figures, he wrote about Jesus as a real person. This is noteworthy because Josephus wasn't just any writer, he was a learned historian, a man well-versed in documenting historical events with accuracy and precision. The fact that he penned Jesus into his historical accounts suggests that Jesus wasn't just a figment of imagination, but a being who walked the earth. But the writings of Josephus do more than just mention Jesus. They offer a unique perspective that complements our understanding from the New Testament. Josephus wasn't a follower of Jesus. He didn't write to propagate Christianity. His accounts were largely objective, void of the religious fervor that often colors Christian texts. This objectivity adds a layer of credibility to his accounts, making them a valuable piece of evidence in our exploration. The importance of Josephus's writings as evidence cannot be overstated. Remember, we're discussing a time when documentation wasn't as rigorous and widespread as it is today. In this context, having a historian of Josephus's caliber write about Jesus is akin to finding a treasure trove of historical evidence. It's like unearthing a time capsule that gives us a glimpse into the past. What makes Josephus's writings even more fascinating is that they came from a non-Christian source. Most of our understanding of Jesus comes from Christian texts which, while valuable, often present a one-sided view. Josephus, on the other hand, offers a different lens, one not coloured by religious beliefs. This makes his accounts a unique piece of evidence, one that adds depth to our understanding. So what does this mean for our exploration? Well, it adds weight to the argument for Jesus' existence. It suggests that Jesus wasn't just a figure in Christian texts, but a person of historical significance. It shows that Jesus was a part of the broader historical narrative, not just the Christian story. Josephus, despite his Jewish faith, acknowledges the existence of Jesus, adding another layer to our understanding. And so our journey continues, each piece of evidence painting a more complete picture of the historical figure known as Jesus. Of course, we cannot ignore the Christian writings that form the basis of the belief in Jesus. The Christian writings, primarily the New Testament, provide arguably the most comprehensive account of Jesus' life, teachings, miracles, death and resurrection. These texts are a collection of 27 books written by various authors, primarily his followers, in the first century AD. Let's delve into the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, which are the heart of the New Testament. They each offer a unique perspective on Jesus' life and teachings, yet all consistently portray Jesus of Nazareth as a real historical figure. Matthew, for instance, focuses on Jesus as the Messiah, the promised saviour of the Jewish people. Mark, on the other hand, presents Jesus as a suffering servant, emphasizing his humanity. Luke depicts Jesus as the perfect man, highlighting his compassion and care for the marginalized. Finally, John presents Jesus as the divine Son of God, emphasizing his deity. Aside from the Gospels, there are also the Pauline epistles. These are letters written by the Apostle Paul, a critical figure in early Christianity, to various Christian communities. In these letters, Paul addresses Jesus as a real person who lived, taught, performed miracles, died, and was resurrected. Moreover, we have the Book of Acts, which details the establishment and growth of the early Christian church after Jesus' ascension. Here we find numerous references to Jesus as a historical figure whose teachings and actions inspired the formation of a new spiritual movement. And let's not forget the Book of Revelation, an apocalyptic text that, while highly symbolic, firmly anchors its narrative in the belief of Jesus as a real person and the saviour of humanity. It's crucial to understand that these writings, while providing a detailed account of Jesus' life, are faith-based. They were written by believers for believers 
and their primary goal was not historical documentation, but spiritual instruction and encouragement. However, the consistency of their narrative, the detailed descriptions of locations, customs and events, and the existence of multiple independent accounts all point to a strong basis in historical reality. They offer a window into a time and place and give us a vivid picture of a man whose teachings and actions left an indelible mark on history. It's also worth noting that these texts have been rigorously scrutinized over centuries by believers and skeptics alike and have stood the test of time. They have been translated into numerous languages, have been preserved in thousands of manuscripts and have been the subject of countless scholarly studies. This testifies to their enduring value and the importance of the figure they portray. While faith-based, these writings provide a consistent narrative of Jesus' life and teachings. Scene script, having explored the evidence, we now analyze its significance. Let's begin with the classical writings. The mention of Christus by the Roman historian Tacitus is a compelling piece of evidence. He is a reputable source and his account aligns with the historical details of Jesus' death as depicted in the New Testament. However, one could argue that Tacitus, writing several decades after the supposed events, may have been influenced by Christian beliefs already circulating in Rome. This doesn't negate the value of his account, but it's worth noting that his writings serve more as a reinforcement of the New Testament narrative rather than independent confirmation of Jesus' existence. Moving on to the Jewish writings, the words of Josephus, a Jewish priest and historian, offer substantial evidence of Jesus' existence. Josephus lived in first century Palestine and later in Rome, overlapping with the time of Jesus. He wrote about Jesus as a real person and even prophesied the rise of the Roman Emperor Vespasian. Yet, we should approach Josephus' account with caution. His writings have been scrutinized for possible Christian interpolations, meaning that some of his words about Jesus might have been added or altered by later Christian scribes. Despite this controversy, Josephus' account remains one of the most important non-Christian references to Jesus. As we consider Christian writings, it's important to remember that while they provide a wealth of information about Jesus and his teachings, they also have inherent biases. They were written by followers of Jesus with the intent of spreading his message. This doesn't invalidate their historical value, but it does mean we should scrutinize them carefully, considering their purpose and context. The strengths of these pieces of evidence lie in their diversity and corroboration. They derive from different sources, each with its own perspective, and yet they all point towards the existence of a man named Jesus in first century Palestine. Their weaknesses, however, lie in their potential biases and the time gap between the events they describe and when they were actually written. In analyzing the historical context, it's clear that the existence of Jesus was not a universally accepted fact in the first century. There was debate and uncertainty, much like there is today. Yet the fact that Jesus was written about not just by his followers, but also by non-Christians, suggests that he was a figure of significance whose impact was felt beyond the confines of his own faith community. In terms of impact on the debate about Jesus' existence, each of these pieces of evidence plays a crucial role. They don't conclusively prove that Jesus existed, but they do provide a strong case for his historical reality. They challenge the idea that Jesus was a purely mythical figure and invite us to consider him as a man who lived and breathed in a specific historical and cultural context. Each piece of evidence, while different, contributes to the broader debate, painting a complex picture of Jesus' existence. The question remains, what does this evidence mean for the debate? The evidence we've examined, drawn from classical, Jewish and Christian writings, carries significant implications for the ongoing debate about the existence of Jesus of Nazareth. The accounts and references we've explored have the potential to shift perspectives, alter dialogues, and in some instances, even settle age-old arguments. For religious scholars, these findings, particularly those from non-Christian sources, offer a compelling endorsement of Jesus as a historical figure. They provide a robust counterpoint to skeptics who dismiss Jesus as a purely mythical figure. 
This evidence helps to fortify the bridge between faith and scholarship, underscoring the possibility for religious beliefs and academic inquiry to coexist and even complement one another. Historians, too, can find value in this evidence. The references to Jesus in classical and Jewish writings serve to place him more firmly within the historical context, providing a clearer image of the era in which he lived. They offer a glimpse into the socio-political dynamics of the time, enriching our understanding of history. For believers, these pieces of evidence can be a source of affirmation. They provide a tangible connection to the figure they revere, reinforcing the historical foundation of their faith. But it's important to remember that faith, by its very nature, transcends the need for empirical evidence. While these findings can strengthen belief, they are not its sole basis. In conclusion, the evidence we've looked at, while varied in nature and source, points towards a single direction, the existence of Jesus of Nazareth. They offer a historical basis for the Christian faith, a basis that's not solely reliant on religious texts or traditions. The evidence, while varied, points towards the existence of Jesus, providing a historical basis for the Christian faith. In conclusion, the question of Jesus' existence is far from a simple one. This journey has taken us through the corridors of history, exploring classical Jewish and Christian writings. Each of these sources brings a unique perspective Yet they all echo a common theme, the existence of a figure named Jesus of Nazareth. From the annals of classical writings, we delved into the works of the Roman historian Tacitus. His mention of a Christus who met his end at the hands of Pontius Pilate aligns with the historical details of Jesus' death as depicted in the New Testament. This correspondence between independent sources strengthens the argument for Jesus' existence. Turning to Jewish writings, we encountered the intriguing figure of Josephus, a Jewish priest of the first century. His writings not only acknowledged Jesus as a real person, but also intriguingly prophesied the rise of the Roman Emperor Vespasian. This prophesy has no bearing on the existence of Jesus, but once again, an independent source affirms his existence. Christian writings, while perhaps expected to confirm Jesus' existence, provide additional depth to our understanding. They not only affirm his life, but also offer insights into his teachings and the early formation of Christianity. As we reflect on these varied sources, we see the importance of considering diverse evidence in historical debates. A single source may be dismissed as biased or inaccurate. But when multiple independent sources echo the same message, the weight of evidence tilts the scales of historical truth. While the debate continues, the evidence explored today provides a compelling case for the historical existence of Jesus of Nazareth. The echoes of the past, heard through the writings of Tacitus, Josephus and early Christians, reverberate through the annals of history, adding their voices to the chorus affirming the existence of this pivotal figure.